Congratulations on winning in the first round of the fantasy playoffs, but to quote the late, great Kobe Bryant, job's not finished. It's time to lock in again and get those starting lineups set for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday's games as you battle for your shot at a championship. I'm Jordan Hill, and I'm here to help you do that as we take a look at Rotoballer's consensus half PPR rankings for the rest of week 16. We'll dive right in, but first, please be sure to leave a like on the video and drop a comment down below with any start-sit dilemmas you're facing. We'll start things off at the quarterback position with number 9, Jared Goff. Goff had a few underwhelming weeks in a row, but he came through when it mattered most with five touchdown passes in week 15. He goes on the road this week to take on the Vikings, whose defense has been stout recently, and we all know that Goff tends to play better at home. Regardless, Jake Browning managed over 300 yards and two touchdowns against Minnesota last week, and Detroit can clinch their first division title in 30 years with a win on Sunday. Don't anticipate five more touchdowns, but you can have confidence in Goff as your QB1. Moving up to number six, we have Justin Fields. Fields had a rough showing for fantasy last week, but this was against the Browns defense in Cleveland, and if you saw any of that game, you probably saw Fields deliver a few excellent passes that were flat out dropped by his receivers. Both he and his weapons should have a great opportunity to bounce back this week against the Cardinals defense that's been giving it up on the ground, through the air, and on the scoreboard. Arizona just surrendered a four-touchdown performance to Brock Purdy last week and a four-touchdown performance to Matt Stafford in Week 12, and because the Bears haven't had much success with their running backs recently, I think we'll see them rely on their dual-threat QB in a very winnable game. And coming in up at number three is Dak Prescott. Prescott was on fire from week 6 through 14, but came crashing back down to earth in a shocking blowout loss to the Bills last week. This was a game to forget, both for Dallas and for Prescott's fantasy managers, and if you made it through the week despite Dak's poor outing, you gotta go right back to him against the Dolphins this Sunday. On paper, Miami has been a tough matchup for QBs over the past four weeks, but the quarterbacks that faced during that span are Tim Boyle, Sam Howe, Will Levis, and the combination of Zach Wilson and Trevor Simeon. The over-under for this game is set at around 50 and a half total points, so we should expect Prescott to put up some big numbers. There's no way around it. Our number Number 11 running back Brees Hall was horrible last week and probably almost cost you a victory. That doesn't inspire much confidence heading into the semifinals, but his matchup against the Commanders is just too good to pass up. Washington has given up the second most fantasy points per game to running backs over the past four weeks, and Kyron Williams just racked up 155 total yards against them in week 15. I can't blame you if you're scared of a potential Trevor Simeon-led offense, but I just don't see how Hall doesn't pay off against this defense. Things are looking good for number eight, Jonathan Taylor, to return this week against the Atlanta Falcons. JT logged a full practice on Thursday, and meanwhile, teammate Zach Moss has been missing practice with an arm injury he suffered last week. Atlanta has been really solid against the run in 2023, but Taylor having the backfield to himself while the Colts fight to win the AFC South puts him in must-start territory. We also shouldn't expect any limitations to his workload, as the injury he's coming back from was just to his thumb. What a pleasant surprise James Cook has been over the past four weeks, and his play has him skyrocketing up to number two in our Week 16 rankings. Cook demolished Dallas's defense for over 200 total yards and two touchdowns last week, and he'll be rewarded for this performance with a cakewalk of a matchup against the Chargers. Yes, the same Chargers that just lost 63-21 to to the Raiders. All Bills players look like smash starts here, but Cook may be in the best spot of all as LA has surrendered the six most fantasy points to running backs this season and is unlikely to keep up with Buffalo's offensive firepower. That being said, Cook should get a lot of touches once the Bills establish a lead. We'll kick off our wide receivers with a guy that definitely didn't let you down in round one, and that's our number nine, Debo Samuel. Samuel only had four receptions, but two of them went for touchdowns against the Cardinals. Debo's been a touchdown machine over the second half of the season, finding the end zone nine times over the past six weeks. His matchup against the Ravens on Christmas Day is a little scary, but believe it or not, Baltimore has given up the six most fantasy points to receivers since week 12. This defense will still be a challenge, but Samuel and the 49ers are on a roll right now, so he's still a firm wide receiver one. In what feels like the first time in forever, Mike Evans was outshined by Chris Godwin in week 15, but he still came down with a touchdown and comes in at number seven for us this week. He faces a Jaguars defense that has been very generous to fantasy wideouts over the course of the season. It was nice to see Godwin get involved, and he remains in play for fantasy as well, but Evans has been Baker Mayfield's go-to guy all year, and he has as good a shot as anyone to score on Sunday. After a solid 7-for-84 day in Week 15, welcome back to the top 5, Justin Jefferson. 
Even though Jordan Addison got the touchdowns, Jefferson earned a team-high 10 targets in his first full contest with Nick Mullins. Ty Chandler had a breakout performance against the Bengals last week, but now the Vikings will take on the division rival Lions, who have surrendered the fewest fantasy points to running backs this season, but have been vulnerable to the wide receiver position. Expect Minnesota to rely on their passing attack in this one, making Jefferson an elite option once again. We'll conclude with our tight end rankings, starting with number 9, Isaiah Likely, who has filled in admirably for the injured Mark Andrews. Likely has scored in each of Baltimore's two games since its Week 13 bye, and has been consistently targeted by Lamar Jackson. The 49ers pose a threat defensively, but Trey McBride did just feast against them last week, and the Ravens have relied heavily upon their starting tight end for years now. I think we can trust the volume and bank on likely to produce on Monday night. With Joe Flacco at the helm, our number six tight end, David Njoku, has been unstoppable. He saw 14 targets last week and has scored three times over the past two weeks. He'll have a good opportunity to keep it up this week against the Houston Texans, who are allowing the ninth most fantasy points to tight ends this year. CJ Stroud's absence greatly reduces the chance of this contest turning into a shootout, but Njoku can still get it done with Cleveland's running game struggling as of late. Let's jump all the way to the top and talk about a player who's no stranger to being in the number one spot. Of course I'm talking about Travis Kelsey. Fantasy managers are quite upset at the veteran's output this year, and while he's definitely not living up to his draft day price tag, he's still the tight end three on the season. This week, Kelsey gets the Raiders, who he posted a casual 6 for 91 against in week 12. Las Vegas has been middle of the road against the tight end position, and although Kelsey may not have the ceiling that he used to, he's still Patrick Mahomes' most dependable option, and you simply can't bench him in your most important matchup yet. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please remember to subscribe to Rotoballer for more awesome fantasy football playoff content that'll help you win big in 2023. Thanks so much for tuning in, and best of luck in the semifinals.